The Eagles started 2024 with a bang, signing multiple free agents on both sides of the football, all of which we're going to break down here in this segment. Let's dive into the film where we're going to start things off with Saquon Barkley. This is a player that everybody watching this video should be familiar with at this point. The former number two overall pick for the New York Giants has been one of the most dynamic playmakers at running back since he entered the NFL a few seasons ago. Now, what makes Saquon Barkley so difficult is his combination of height, weight and speed. And you can see here on this play last year against Washington, his ability to find space and take advantage of all the green grass at his disposal. He's just so hard to bring down. And the difficulty that defenses have tackling him, getting him to the ground, that shows up in a multitude of ways. You see here last year against the New York Jets, this is your basic trap scheme where the Giants are going to pull a guard over to the backside to block the defensive tackle and you get a couple of offensive linemen up to the second level. This is designed to be a quick hitting downhill run to get Saquon Barkley with momentum getting to the second level of the defense. And you can see here multiple defenders try to get their mitts on him. Three arm tackles there that Saquon Barkley is able to avoid. He's able to get up not just to the second level but to the third level for an explosive play on the ground. Then you get to a play here against the Buffalo Bills. And again, you see Saquon's combination of height, weight, speed come into play. You've got a defender one-on-one -on -one in the hole. This is a play in a phone booth that any linebacker or safety is hoping that they can make against a running back, but Saquon is too big. He is too strong. Even if you get both arms wrapped around him, he is going to run through contact and pick up extra yards. And again, this one goes for an explosive play. Then you get the speed. Not only the size and the strength, but you get the speed. Here against the Raiders, again, from last season. This safety here rolled down into the box. He's responsible for this D-gap outside the tight end, between these two tight ends here. Well, the safety's got eyes on Saquon Barkley the whole way. This is a basic zone run. Saquon's got no friction here. There's no reason for him to cut this back. So he's just going to carry this all the way to the front side. And the safety thinks, you know what, I've got him bottled up here. It's second and long. I'm hoping to make the tackle here for a four or five yard gain and bring up third down. But Saquon is just so much faster than you think he is when you see how big he is. And he's able to get to the corner and turn this into into a first down. He moves the chains, keeps the drive alive. This is what Saquon has been so good at over the course of his career. He is so hard to bring down. He creates yards for himself, and he has had to do that so, so often in the New York Giants offense since he entered the NFL. But what also makes him so dynamic, not just as a runner, but also as a receiver, he can create those explosive plays. And you see here against Washington on the road, you can see that he is lined up to the boundary in the backfield with a receiver lined up outside of him. And if you are in an offense where, let's say you've got two outstanding receivers and a, and a pro bowl, all pro quality tight end. So like one you have here in Philadelphia, you've got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. You're not always going to be able to divert extra sets of eyeballs to a running back in the backfield. And what that means, you're going to get some one-on-one -on -one coverage looks, especially when you get into the high red zone. And look here against Washington, where this is just going to be a basic wheel route from Saquon Barkley running right down the numbers here. And he's going to be one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker, and that is a mismatch every single time Saquon Barkley steps on the football field. The Giants are able to hook up here for a wide-open touchdown. This is the value that Saquon Barkley can bring. The explosive plays, not just in the run game, but in the pass game as well. It's not just about checkdowns and screen game with Saquon, he can impact you down the field. He's run routes like a wide receiver, and he's run vertical routes from the backfield. Excited to see what Kellen Moore and the offensive staff will cook up with Saquon here in Philadelphia. Let's now go over to the defensive side of the football. We're going to take a look at another player who spent his time in Jersey here since entering the NFL, and that's Bryce Huff, who has been playing for the New York Jets, and he has been one of the most disruptive pass rushers in football over the course of his career especially these last two or three years. In fact, last season, all defenders that played 100-plus snaps, he had the highest pressure rate in the entire NFL, just ahead of Micah Parsons. That's according to Next Gen Stats. So when you are looking at Bryce Huff, his ability to get off the ball, that first step, that is what stands out. And you saw that here on a couple of these plays. Against the Dolphins, his ability to get off the ball and win the corner. He uses that Superman cross-chop move to get home against Tua Tagovailoa. You see him against Washington here, where he's able to to get the corner, and this one's not a sack, but he's able to impact the throwing arm of Sam Howell and force an incompletion. You saw this all the time, especially on third down from Bryce Huff, but 
His game is not just about speed and finesse trying to turn the corner. No, he has got the ability to transition from speed to power as well. And you see him here against the Chargers. This, again, from last fall, where he is going to put his foot in the ground and go right into the chest of the left tackle. Look at the power there from Bryce Huff. He's able to bench press the tackle into the lap of the quarterback and get home for a sack. That is big-time two-way versatility for Bryce Huff as a pass rusher. Now, keep in mind, he was a role player for for the New York Jets the last few years. He only played about 130 snaps against the run last season, which is a low number, but that's what he was asked to do within the structure of that defense. Now, does that mean he can't play the run? No, no, no. Well, don't get that mixed up either because when he was asked to play the run, he had some really good flashes on tape. And we'll start here against the Dallas Cowboys because that first step, that comes into play. They're trying to run a pin-pull scheme where the wide receiver is going to pin down on Bryce Huff. But again, that first step quickness, that gets him into the backfield. He gets a TFL of Tony Pollard. Then you've got this play against the Buffalo Bills where he's going to make a play on the backside matched up against the tight end. He's able to stalemate the tight end, find the football, get off the block, and make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Nice play there at the point of attack. But it's not just against tight ends. It's not just, oh, look at him win off the ball, the first step quickness. He also has shown the ability. This is second down. This is a running down. He's going to play against the tackle, a right tackle here at the point of attack, and watch Bryce Huff hold his ground, lock out, find the football, get off, and make the stop. So, Bryce Huff, was not asked to defend the run all that often in the structure of that defense over the course of the last couple of years in New York, but it does not mean that he can't be a two-way player. He's going to be asked to, to, to be able to defend the run and get after the quarterback here in Philadelphia. He has got the skill set to do exactly that. The Eagles also made another big addition this week with the signing of C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Spent the last year in Detroit, but obviously was here in Philadelphia in 2022, and honestly, no breakdown needed for this one. Eagles fans, you know what to expect from C.J. Gardner Johnson. Let's now get to our next player. We're going to stay on defense now and talk through Zach Bond, who the Eagles agreed to terms with earlier this week. And when you look at Zach Bond, the first thing that stands out to me, his versatility and his athleticism. We'll start with him as a pass rusher, where you could see him come off the ball here, and he's got that ability to win the corner. This is a nice little ghost rush move against one of the best tackles in football. That's Penny Sewell, the Detroit Lions, where he's going to fake the bull rush, and then he's just going to dip the corner. You see him dip his, his shoulder, clear the edge, get home, and get get quarterback Jared Goff to the ground for a sack. So you've got Zach Bond, his ability to get after the quarterback off the edge. He's an undersized pass rusher for sure, but that size allows him to be a versatile playmaker in the front seven. And that's what always stood out to me, not just here with the New Orleans Saints, but even going back to college at Wisconsin, you saw him used all over the front seven. He lined up off the edge and also as a stacked backer here against the Bucks last fall. You see him lined up as a traditional off-ball linebacker on the weak side. And watch him just kind of read things out. This is going to be a run in his direction. And you could just see after the motion, he's going to now have to make sure he reads this out. He's responsible for one of these interior gaps, but he reads the body language of the running back Rashad White. He reads his eyes and see, you know what? The cutback is coming. He leaves his gap on the front side. He's able to scrape in from the backside and make the stop one-on-one. -on -one. He's able to get the running back to the ground. So you like that from Zach Bond. Again, a guy that has not played full-time as a stacked backer. He's moved all around the formation, but he gives you that versatility. You see the range here. He makes the play from the backside as well. He's been an accomplished special teams player over the course of his career in the NFL. And then also, he can play in coverage. He can drop a little bit. And you see that here against the Houston Texans, a really aware play in zone coverage where he's going to pass off the vertical route from the tight end, and he gets right into the passing lane. He knows the concept that's coming. He see, he, this is all through film study. You make a play like this, gets into the passing lane, and picks off the rookie of the year in C.J. Stroud. So you really like what you've seen from Zach Bond as a pass rusher, as a run defender, and then in coverage. He, is, he was seen as like that prototypical Sam linebacker, strong side linebacker, coming out of college, and that's exactly what he's been so far in the NFL. Now, let's wrap things up with Matt Hennessy, a former Temple product, played here on North Broad Street, so he comes down a little bit further south here in South Philly. After starting his career, former third-round pick of the Atlanta Falcons, he's played guard and he's played center. And what stands out to me when I go back and watch his reps, because he's played both positions here, and we'll go through uh, some of these plays really fast, 
his play speed, how fast he gets off the ball, that really stands out no matter which position he was playing. Matt Hennessy was able to get off the football. He showed really good range, as you see here, against the Bucks. His ability to make plays on the move, make blocks on the move, was really impressive. And then, also, he's got really strong hands. So, whenever you're talking about an offensive lineman, you say, okay, he's got play speed, he can get off the ball fast, he's got light feet so he can match and pass protection, he's got range to be able to make any block in the playbook, and then he's got really strong hands on contact to be able to latch on, run his feet, and finish blocks. Well, you're really kind of cooking with gas there, especially when you've got proven versatility. He can play left guard, he can play center, he can play right guard. You love to be able to see that from your offensive linemen, it's that proven versatility. So we've gone through all of the key free agent acquisitions here. Just on the opening day of free agency, we know that the offseason is not over. Obviously, we've got a, a few more weeks of free agency here, and then you've got the NFL draft at the end of April. The entire summer for Howie Roseman and the personnel department to continue adding pieces We'll be breaking them all down right here on the Eagles YouTube page.